So boys and girls, today is an exciting day because you are going to be starting by drawing. Last week you um, drew your castle. If you didn't, we'll deal with that in a minute. Some of you drew in pencil and have to trace over. If that's you, who doggies, you have a lot to do today. But um, most of you are kind of at, that, at this point where you had finished your castle. And what you're gonna do now is what you see on the screen is the first part of our day is gonna be you adding, using a fine Sharpie to add in some little bricks. We're gonna have this idea sheet on the table for you so that you know the steps of what we're asking for. The first thing that you're doing are drawing on some bricks. You will not be doing bricks over the whole thing because that would take forever and ever and ever. We really don't need that. You'll see here that Miss Adriana is just doing some long rectangles and she's just putting them connected here and there and everywhere, kind of sprinkling them around just to give the suggestion or the idea of bricks, as I said before. The next thing is that you'll transition back to that big Sharpie and you can blacken in some of your windows. Some kids like to keep them open and put a color in there. Totally up to you. You don't have to do this, but if you want to, I just wanted to show you what that looked like. The other optional thing is to do something called cross hatching. This is where you draw diagonal lines to kind of give the feeling of a shadow. We do this with pen and ink when you're drawing. It's a way of just making it seem like that area is darker without actually coloring it in with gray or with black. Now, the last thing you'll do in the drawing part of our uh, first part of our day is that you're gonna decide on a background some of you may want to draw with your Sharpie a moon before you start coloring. Some of you may want to take the Sharpie and draw some mountains in the background. You could draw some branches that are kind of peeking, uh, that you would peek through to see your castle in the background. You could draw some clouds with your Sharpie or some winter trees. So this is when you're still in the drawing phase of our project or you could put some hills and green trees and green hills behind you. The next thing we're doing is painting the bricks. Let's talk about what that means. You're finished drawing. You're gonna be tempted to say, what am I supposed to do? Blah, blah. Skip it. You have to paint bricks. On the brick table, there are many different colors that people use as a brick color. I didn't want to just give you gray and call it done. If you look here, this person used pain gray, which is kind of a blue black. Here's someone used raw umber. It's got a kind of a cool look. This person used um, an ivory black. This is more of the reddish color that we have over there. And before you go and ask, just think about it. To paint, you're going to need water and a brush. The water and the brushes are at the sink. You're just going to get it yourself. Then you're going to come over and choose your brick color, and you're going to take that little plastic dish with the paint on it. Now, the paint that's on there is actually watercolor. It's not meant for you to take your brush and dig it up and get a whole glob. You are simply touching that brush to the watercolor. You shouldn't have any of it left. And do you see already how dark it is? This is not paint that you're globbing onto your brush. You take that wet brush and you just touch it. If you say, whoa, that was too dark, just jiggle your brush into the water and go straight back. You're gonna see that there's still pigment on there but now because you rinsed it out a little, it's much lighter. Now you don't have to worry that you've ruined your castle because as you keep painting, you can just kind of keep stealing from that first dark part that you painted on to your castle. So check this out. Now it kind of could just look like a shadow where I first started. Did you notice that I didn't even dip in? Now I've like took just the tiniest bit from the edge to give me some more pigment on my brush, but honestly, the majority of what I have on my brush is water. And when I go over into the pigment, because I know it's watercolor, I just touch my brush to it 
and I can come back and I can keep going. So really, it should almost hardly be obvious that you've taken anything off that piece of plastic because the amount of pigment that you're putting on there each time is so tiny, all right? So I'm continuing doing this, but you could imagine doing this with an ochre color or the reddish brown or the raw umber. It just so happens that on the video, I'm doing it with this gray color because that's the disc and so color I that I chose. Is I want you to Here's show someone the that ha is going that too thick. You don't so want to do that. You're putting it there. And you're here it is someone who dipped their water in, dipped their brush in their water, just it. touched it, just yes, touched it. Anything. Did you see how little? And when, you come over and when they came over to go ahead and start, perfect. Start it's very it. transparent. You exactly. can see through it. We can still see your drawing. Now, Here's Miss Adriana, and I just wanted to show you how she did it because she actually did it in stages. She started off just getting the color down. Some kids are super particular of trying to go around the windows and have it all perfect. Really, just get her done. Get the whole thing, the color. And then what you can do is dip it into the pigment again to get it just a little darker. And you can go back and just put little shadows here and there. I wanted you to see Miss Adriana do it because she's been to an art school, she's learned how to do this. And I want you to see that she is just gradually making the pigment just a little, mixing it a little darker and a little darker each time just to get some shadows on there. Pretty smart of Miss Adriana, she's a genius. So we started off the drawing. Then when you're finished drawing, you think to yourself, oh, if I'm gonna paint, what do I need? You need a brush, you're gonna need some water, and you're gonna need some pigment. Now watch Luca here. He just returned his brick color, and now he's saying, where am I supposed to go next? Literally wondering where, oh, he figured it out. When you're done with your bricks, you're gonna go up to the front table where there are two palettes there. One is for like lots of greens for landscaping. And on the right are all the colors you would need if you're wanting to do a sunset or a moat. You can see that this person did a beautiful turquoise door, just kind of made that pretty. This person did a gorgeous sunset in the background using some of the more colorful paints. Here you can see green hills off in the background going down to a beautiful moat. Here you can see that Miss Adriana did some fall trees in the background. When you're finished with everything, you're going to bring your bowl and your brush back to the sink. Just leave it there. We'll rinse it out. Then you're going to go back and you're going to return your watercolors. If you still have a little disc from your bricks, you're going to bring that back over to the brick area. And then you'll hold your artwork like a pizza and put it back into the drying rack. So remember, you're going to be drying bricks coloring the windows, doing your cross hatching. That's as soon as this video is done, that's what you're doing. Don't go get water, because you got a first draw, and then you're gonna paint. I sure do hope you're gonna remember these steps. Have fun!